Dr. Davis, welcome. Thank you for joining me. And thank you. What is ERP and is it just for large organizations? No, I'm happy to say it's not for just large organizations because there are many, many small companies that need that too. But enterprise resource planning is an integrated software system that helps manage the information and the business processes that need to take place in every function of the business, starting with the sales and marketing effort all the way through production, inventory management, shipping the product, and then, of course, the after-service sale and, and support that needs to go on too. So you're all working from the same set of data out of the same database. And that makes life a whole lot easier when you're all working to the same, marching to the same tune, so to speak. So small companies can appreciate your talents, too. They're usually more dependent on it than large companies. Because, yeah, they have a harder time attracting the talent pool um, with smaller companies sometimes. And they may not be used to operating in that environment. And there are software... Uh, packages out there that are specifically targeted to the smaller organizations. So um, they really have a pool of uh, resources to pull from and, and use. Would you say larger organizations have their own in-house person? They do. There are some advantages in using an outside person. Mm -hmm. uh, as an outside consultant, uh, for myself uh, specifically, I don't have any political agendas. Mm -hmm. Whereas within uh, employees within an organization, sometimes people are working to their own agendas mm -hmm. or have relationships uh, with, um, let's say, a senior management team member. And it just um, becomes problematic sometimes. So sometimes it's just easier to bring somebody in from the outside. Doctor. Technology is in every aspect of our lives. We just can't get away from it. We watch it, we work with it, and even develop personal relationships using technology. <laughs> <laughs> and I know about that personally. <laughs> are you afraid we are losing touch with our customers and employees because we are so focused on technology and not people? Interesting question. <laughs> and being a, a technology person, I look at it from a different perspective. Um, this ability to manage information technology and have that information at your fingertip actually allows us to be more in tune with the customer because we can tailor our approach to the customer or to those specific needs for the customer, whereas before we had no method of being able to capture that data in order to know what the customer mm -hmm. needs and wants are. So I think it has made us better able to respond to the customer. So it is a win-win relationship you have when technology works for people. Yes, but you've got to keep that end goal in mind because technology <laughs> can take a life of its own. We've got to remember ultimately we're in business to service the customer and make sure that everything we do with technology accomplishes that. Doctor is an expert in change management. What can we do as business professionals to plan for change? Well, it comes down to, to letting the organization know that change is, an, is necessary. In other words, we will not do well as an organization if we don't change and adapt. We are now in a global economy. We're competing with people across our domestic borders now. So it's very necessary for us, not only as an organization, but as a country, to find ways to be more productive. So you need to communicate that need to all the employees so they understand that their job is on the line, that their job has to change along with the organization and along with the country and along with the world. Interesting. What changes do you see on the horizon that excites you the most? Well, what I really want to <laughs> dig into right now is uh, it's, it's been very nice that we've been able to capture information and it's gotten cheap enough that we can manage to it. But unfortunately, it can weigh us down if we don't look at the life cycle of management. So uh, in other words, man, uh, data will grow to a point where it's going to drain our networks and it'll bog down the resources that have to maintain and manage it unless we find a way of disposing of it when it's no longer necessary. So for the future, realizing that life, the life cycle of information is very much as real as it is for product life cycles and learning how to manage that. Thank you, Dr. Davis, for your insights.